All right, got something a little unrelated. I'm going to show you a couple things I got today. This is a cheap Chinese portable black and white television. Another version of that television. And an NES. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because this Curtis branded TV over here. Get that over here. Let me try and show you. This bad boy has composites, uh, AVN for video, and one mono channel, the left audio channel, I believe, as well as RF input jack, and it runs off 12 volts. I mod modified this TV to run off with the ion cells. As you can see here, up anyway, yeah, this is running off a uh, standard uh, lithium ion cells that I took out of an old laptop battery. Runs for about an hour or two off them. About the same as you get off the traditional cells this thing was designed to run off of. Except this time I have to spend a fortune on batteries. <laughs> Both these TVs run at about 12 watts. Yeah, 12 watts. It's about one amp, roughly. So what I'm going to show you is that this TV does not have composite inputs. It only has RF. It's kind of cheap. I'm just going to make this real quick. And I'll show you. As you can see, no AV inputs. Instead, it has a switch for toggling between uh, battery mode and recharge mode and external power mode. So unlike the Curtis brand TV, while this one does not have uh, the AV inputs, it does have the ability to charge rechargeable batteries, even though I wouldn't really trust this thing to do that. These cheap uh, Chinese black and white sets were made around the late 90s. This particular one, when was this one made? 2002. So this one was made in 2002, but there have been some that are as old as 98. This one is also 2002, a little bit newer actually. They're both kind of crap. Screen quality ain't too great. The contrast shifts when there's anything bright on screen. It's kind of annoying. But anyway, uh, this is my first successful soldering pack job mod project that I considered. This TV had in value too much, so I pretty much experimented. This was basically my practice with soldering. And what I did was I added composite inputs to it. And there's that second wires to disable or enable the uh, RF tuner so I can actually still use it. Basically, I found the data sheet for the IC that's in this TV. It uses a single chip to handle most of the uh, functions for this TV, except for maybe the radio. The radio is on its own board, but even the chip still handles the uh, audio input for that. But I added an uh, AV input directly onto pin 6 of that chip because it's listed as the, uh, the composite output. So this TV actually has an internal composite signal that communicates between the IC and the uh, RF modulator half of the system. And whenever I connect this two wires right here, that connects the ground plane to the uh, outer metal shielding of the uh, RF modulator. And that enables the uh, output for it. I'll show you what it looks like when it's not connected to anything. So it's a blank screen, but watch when I connect these two wires over here to enable the RF. And you get the standard RF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this NES to the RF and I'm going to show you the difference in quality you can get by doing this mod. This is what I'll be using to connect it to the TV via the RF input jack. Don't think this is original to the TV. This is not sure where I got this. All right, now I'm going to uh, connect these wires to enable the RF. I will solder on a switch at some point when I'm not being lazy. 
That should be good enough. I forgot to actually insert the game. Well, I bought this uh, NES uh, from a pawn shop, and it already had the uh, lock chip disabled. The doofus that put this back together had the controller ports back wired up backwards, though. <laughs> player one was player two, and player two was player one. Check the NES here. It's in good, really good condition. I did have to do some work on the slot, bent down all the top pins, and then cleaned my games. Looks just as new. All right, as you can see, there's it's kind of crappy. Even this interference is not a result of the mod. This is actually how it performs normally. It's kind of annoying. Although last night I was not seeing these interference lines. Maybe there's something outside the house that's doing this. Anyway, um, this is what it looks like coming in on the RF, and as you can see, it's kind of shitty. This is really as good as it's going to look on RF. I hear the older TV sets that weren't made in China, the ones with the separated terminals for UHF and VHF, have better quality for RF, but RF is still limited. I'm going to show you the difference here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, RF. These wires are so close together, they kind of drift, they might drift back together on their own, Let's make sure that doesn't happen. So now I'm going to connect my homemade little composite input here how much cleaner that is. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure why they just didn't throw, throw on composite on all these models. This Chinese TV set here is rebranded several times. There's a, This is the Spectra version, the Spectra brand version, the, the Curtis brand I showed about down there, and a few others. Suntone, Kobe had a brand. I remember when I was a kid, about maybe 14 or maybe like a late teen. I had one, a Kobe branded one. I think they were on sale for like $20 at the time. This was like early 2000s, 2003, 2004 maybe. And yeah, th that one didn't have AV inputs. This one didn't have AV inputs, but the other one does. And I'm not sure why. Maybe they didn't have room to put the battery charging function onto the PCB. Because it's a cheap PCB. It's only one side through hole soldering. And... I pretty much recal recalibrated both these TVs. You can barely see anything because I have this uh, the auto exposure turned off on this camera. Otherwise, you'd be seeing flickering on the screen right now. But as you can see, this Curtis brand here. I modified this Curtis brand a little bit. I made all the connections removable through uh, soldered on connector jacks on them, including the antenna, because most of the wires are soldered directly onto the board. It makes moving it back on these pain pain in the ass. Anyway, yeah, I can show you. It works really damn well now that I have the uh, AV input on this. I might try this mod on, on an actual period correct TV, one that was made back in the 80s. I wonder if you can do this to color TVs as well. I did. I could have uh, tapped into the audio IC as well, but I haven't been able to find that yet. I'm not, not going to probe around for it. So this TV is basically just a composite input monitor when it's in this mode the audio works okay when uh when you have the rf tuner enabled but you get kind of this buzz when you don't have it enabled normally but anyway that's there it is just showing off my nes that i got a couple weeks ago works really well great condition paid about 70 for it about two dollars and 50 cents for the Mario and Duck Hut game and I also have Top Gun over there I hear it's a notoriously bad game I actually was able to land the plane out of the carrier uh, I'm not sure if the angry video game nerd knew about it but when it says up up down it, it doesn't refer to the d-pad it refers to where the, the center cursor of the plane is pointed at towards the carrier and that, the annoying thing about that game is yeah, it's the controls are the up down controls are reversed as if you're using a flight stick. So I guess if you had a flight stick that wouldn't be as annoying, but on a NES controller that's awkward to control. Anyway, I actually managed to land on it. Uh, the B, the A and B buttons control your speed when you're doing that landing sequence, so it's kind of important you actually listen to that part because if you don't, you'll undershoot and land in the ocean. <laughs> 
it's not vital to the game though. It's, it's considered a bonus if you land land the plane. So anyway, there you go. I'm gonna solder on a switch onto this damn thing. I'm not even sure why I bothered doing this. This TV belongs in the garbage, honestly. But I think both these TVs have failing caps because the screen brightness fluctuates a little bit when there's anything bright on screen. Could also just be a design flaw. I'm not sure yet, but. These TVs, these little portables that they made were notorious for going bad. They got hot inside and they baked the capacitors and they only last a couple years. These two units they got off eBay have only seen light use, so that hasn't really happened to them yet. But there you go. Portable black and white modded with a composite input. <laughs> I will show you the uh, the chip number for this TV in case you want to find, if you want to do this yourself. If you happen to own one of these, that is the chip number. You just put that into Google and you'll find a few pages related because I wasn't the only one that tried this. Somebody else put, added composite input to a flash, to a different model that had a built-in flashlight. The PCB had a different layout to it a little bit, but it used the same chip. And I guess the Chinese manufacturers reused that chip in a bunch of portable black and whites. Uh, I might get a larger black and white and try to try this model on that and get it in an auction get a proper color TV this one's my sister's but it's it's a more modern CRT and I'm not I don't really like it it's got too much overscan and the problem with these newer TVs is they lock away a lot of the screen fine-tuning for the screen controls back in the hidden service menus because it's all digital now the menus anyway and I can't adjust the vertical overspan over overscan like I can on these older design TVs so yeah, that's one reason why I still want to get an older, maybe er, late 80s model color TV to use my NES. That's what I plan to do anyway. So there you go. No DSI related stuff today. I just wanted to show off my uh, TVs. <laughs>